Well, let's go ahead and get this started. I have a feeling this is going to be a very short meeting. Um, for anyone who needs a link to the previous minutes, those are in this meeting's minutes, which again are in the chat. Does anyone have anything on the previous minutes as far as any corrections or anything? So I added under ongoing discussions, number 85, the vision statement. Pat, you had sent it to the list. I know I had found one minor correction I would have, that I sent to you. Actually, I put it in the ticket that we should have used an and or um, nope. versus an or in one place. Have you gotten any other comments on that? No, nope. it's been all quiet. So uh, I assume that uh, the community doesn't care and hasn't read it. All right, I'm gonna say send out like one other meeting message to the list, give it a week or so, and then let's declare that our vision, vision statement. That works for everyone. Hang on, I'm gonna yell. Puppy and old man playing. Um, all right, and then I just wanted to briefly uh, mentioned the CentOS Connect, which will be on February 3rd in Brussels. I've included a link to the website where you can register and sign up for the room block. Um, we do need 15 rooms in the room block to get the rate and the rooms we have for the Connect. So if you are attending and don't have a room yet, that room will include breakfast. Um, it does seem like it's not that much cheaper than the website, but it actually is because of breakfast. So where is this room block link? The connect.centos.org. Okay. And then scroll down a little bit and it's right there. Did you find it? Yes, I believe it's the one that says the double tree Brussels. Yes. All right, cool. All right. Um, does anyone have any questions about the Connect? I am going to mention it a little bit later when I read Sean's update. Now we have squeaking. All righty. So after the last meeting, or actually during the last meeting, we talked about the fact that sometimes we go over issues that are older that are just stagnant. So in this meeting, we're going to do it a little differently. Um, first, we do have a new issue, number 90, Guidelines for Quay Usage for CentOS SIG. And I'm going to steal that toy from him. Or I will just put the puppy in the other room. Okay, so... Let me bring this up. Usually I have them open. I do not. I do apologize for that. Uh, number 90. Okay, and this was put in by Pingao. Um, and it was answered by Davida, who is unfortunately not here. So I think we might be good with the comment that's in there that explains things. But I will leave this open until the next meeting and get further clarification on it. Yes, I like giving the SIGs sort of their own space to like just grab a name off of Quay and run with it so that they can figure out what makes the most sense for them. And then it's theirs and they can play with it as much as they want. Yeah, and it seemed that Davida and the hyperscaler group, and Neil, you can speak on this, um, have it well documented if we want to adopt it for everyone. Um, it, yeah, I so that's, wanted, we elected to do that because uh, Quay doesn't support subgroups at all. And so it's just like, you got to pick a top level namespace. So it's just like the GitHubs where you have to have a top level namespace of your own. So we just went with CentOS Hyperscale. And it sort of aligns with what we have for Twitch and what I'm going to have for YouTube soon and things like that. So, like, it, we just sort of have a consistent theme for this kind of stuff uh, and seems to work okay. Uh, yeah. I think I'd be cool with us actually promoting that as a general top-level policy thing, um, 
we probably like we probably need to figure out the mechanics of what to do in the cases where a sig goes bankrupt uh in some way where like all these accounts become like dead and and how to recover them in those in those scenarios but but i think that's those are those are definitely problems that can be figured out as part of like a larger policy mechanic but if in principle we're okay with the way that hyperscale does it for everyone else then i'm okay with that that's fine yeah i definitely thought this was a good start um i did not know about the ownership issue maybe we can see if infra or somewhere or maybe we make a sent to us email address that can own it or something just in case yeah so for for hyperscale we are actually using a email alias that was created by infra for us to own all the different accounts so that's how we worked around the problem we might want to make that actually a thing oh, for everybody like, yeah that would be great <laughs> all right because because we thought about what would happen if i got hit by a bus <laughs> All right, Neil, can you add those comments in the sure. ticket for us? Perfect. Yep. Let's see if I can find the link. So, I guess I just have one question, not not to derail a solution here. Um, Pingu seemed to open the ticket because he wants it under the CentOS namespace. And I don't know why, right? Like, if, is, if it's just because he's unaware that like the hyperscaler SIG has a solution and he's totally fine with that, then maybe that's, maybe that's what we do. If there's a rationale for wanting to associate their container images with the official CentOS namespace, we might have to look at something a little bit more structured, right? I suspect this is more of nobody knows what they're doing kind of thing rather than having a particular preference one way or the other. Cause like the only difference between us and a lot of the other SIGs is that we're like, well, if we screw up, we'll change it later. And a lot of SIGs, the people that run those are less willing to do that kind of thing. So, yeah, you know, so I think that's really what it comes down to. If after I give my notes and he's like, I would like to do something different, we can come back and, and deal with that problem accordingly. Yeah, I think that's totally fair. I, Brian's not going to be able to make it today, but I talked to him about this ticket uh, and he has some ideas on a structure if we need it uh, sure. under the yeah. official namespace. So. Makes sense. Yeah, that's That'd why I'm not awesome. rushing to close this out, but let's get all the information in one place and then we can have better discussions about it because it does seem like there's information in multiple places that no one knows about. Yeah. Now, as I mentioned, we were going to kind of do something different. So is there anyone who has anything to comment? Jack, you okay? Yeah. Okay, Jack's muted. <laughs> all right, so basically, instead of going through all the older issues, I've moved them from being on hold and so on and so forth into one group I called older issues. So I'm just gonna read off the names really quick. And if anyone has something to comment about any of them once the list is read, then we'll go ahead and go back and read them through versus us stopping everything every meeting to go through something that we have no update for. So the first one of the older issues is number 88, improve onboarding documentation for new contributors and projects. And this will, um, breaking my own rule there, I will come back. Number 67, trust in the SIGs by default from a CentOS project perspective, secure boot. Number 79, recording historical SIG membership. Number 85, the vision statement, which we've already discussed. Number 03, getting official CentOS images into Azure and number 80 sent to us stream nine in WSL. Now on number 88, we are going to have that doc day on Monday at FOSDOM or after FOSDOM. So we'll work on that there. So that is an update on that one. Does anyone have any other updates? All right, I said this was gonna be quick. Um, community architect update. Um, Sean is on PTO, so I'm going to read this. Um, reminders to submit talk proposals for CentOS Connect. The CFP officially closes today, December 14th, but realistically closes whenever he manages to pull out his laptop and make a schedule. Um, if you are planning on submitting something and you have not done so yet, giving him a heads up like I did about um, one from RDO, just so he knows it's coming will help. So let him know, let me know, and we'll make sure that we 
plan for a late entry into the CFP. I do not know how many have been submitted yet. I only know of one for sure. So um, get your talks in folks. We have nothing for SIG reports. Um, Cloud SIG did submit their quarterly report last week and that was published in the blog. Do we have any other business? Um, <clears throat> Go for it, Neil. The alternative images SIG didn't have the ability to publish their report to the blog. Uh, Troy Dawson was not able to, he has an account on the blog, but was not able to make a post. So he couldn't push out his quarterly report. Okay. Uh, I know I normally send mine to Sean. Um, well, not mine, but the cloud sig does. But we can make sure that he does have permissions. Yeah. Um, yeah, once that's squared away, like I'll just check up with him again so he can actually post it because... Um, we're basically kind of following the same practice that the hyperscale SIG does, which is that we post to the blog, basically, whenever Sean reminds us that we need to make one of these. Um, so, uh, so that's, uh, so yeah, when Troy, when I told Troy about this, he was like, oh, let me go do that. And it was like, oh, I can't. And okay. so that's what that happened. All right. I did put a note in, like I said, for cloud SIG, we tend to just send it to Sean, because previously we just sent it to Rich, but we'll make sure that the SIGs have permissions to publish to the blog. And yeah, I, I, I will place a small slight recommendation that people actually post to the blog instead of sending it to Sean to post to the mailing list, because um, when you post to the blog, it goes everywhere and people notice. When it goes to the mailing list, it, it's like when a tree falls down in a forest and nobody's around to hear it. Um, so... Like it, it definitely really amplifies, you know, the uh, the visibility of what people are doing within within CentOS when you publish blog posts um, yourself uh, with your with your reports. So mm -hmm. I, I I recommend that people consider doing that. You don't have to, but like consider it. Okay. I'm trying not to be the one who submits for cloud sig, but our um, chair was out. <laughs> so I'm not sure who actually has permissions from the cloud sig. And maybe that's something also we need to decide who has permissions, um, at least the chair, co-chair. But I will, I put a note in there that I'll check with Sean and we'll open a ticket if needed. Oh, and that reminds me, Thomas, we need to check to make sure I have the ability to do this too, because I became co-chair of hyperscale in the summer. Okay. okay, Thomas is checking that. So let me change. Thank you. Oof. Yep. Thomas will check. If I don't have the superpower, I will ask um, Sean. Perfect. All right, and that was actually the end of our agenda if anyone else doesn't have any other business. All righty then, everyone have a happy holidays and a happy new year. And we will see each other in January for the next board meeting. I have a feeling office hours will be canceled next week. But we'll yeah, see I will regretfully be unable to make office hours next week. Uh, going to be in a clean room fighting with a computer, so. Oh, geez. Are you going to win? Uh, it's, it's usually a tie. Um, I never <laughs> really win, but sometimes the sand and I agree to behave coherently. Um, oh, good. That's what we want to at least get to a stalemate and, and maybe a tie. Yeah. It's, we don't want you to lose. Yeah. It's about half the time.